Hello, thank you so much for coming to this Ashiko live streaming. This is Atsushi. And this is the Thursday night, 9 p.m. Eastern Time. And this is the live streaming where I stitch Sashiko while talking about this story about Sashiko. It is not a lecture or tutorials or webinar, so I will not teach anything specifically and I will not probably answer any technical questions like let's say how to use the thimble or needles or you know those running switch. I will not answer those questions, but I am happy to answer the other questions such as the cultural stories behind it or you know the other stories. Good evening, good evening. Thank you so much for coming. And it is an announcement, but I have published, I have released the online course, um, so called Introduction to the Japanese Sashiko Stitchery. Just a second, I will get the graphic. And the link is on the description area. I hope you have a chance to check it out. Um, this is the answer I was trying to make last six or seven years, actually. Uh, I often received the question, what is the answer? What is, what is the recommendation for me? Huh? What is recommendation for Sashiko? And unfortunately, uh, I did not have any recommendation in English. Um, the materials you can find in English are not wrong. They're not wrong or they're not incorrect, but they are not explaining the whole picture. I'm not saying this course, the online course right now, are introducing every single steps of the Sashiko, but at least I try to involve everybody I can think of. Uh, so that will be a very good introduction. I did not say that this is the master class. This is the introduction of the oops. So this is the Yep, that's the sorry, that's the Yeah, it's kind of I don't feel embarrassing, but it's quite weird to see myself in that. <laughs> anyway, um I hope that it's going to be a good intro introduction to many people. I wanted to introduce the Japanese Sashiko, but I could not have the um, destination for everybody. I do have the online class or in-person workshop, but those requires a little bit of a commitment uh, from the time-wise or even pricing-wise. I think it's a fair pricing, but at the same time, it's not for everybody, especially if they do not live in the U.S., um, it can be quite expensive. So, the pricing for this new course is scary good. It's very reasonable uh, because of the Domestika's big platform. And I hope that this course will be the good introduction for what I'm trying to share in Sushiko. Okay, so I will switch it off to the camera, just a second. Did, 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 did. I'm seeing you every time I log into Facebook. Yeah, their advertisement is pretty crazy, so I see myself too there too. Uh, but yeah, um, if there's any questions for that course, I'm happy to have the Q&A section, which I plan to make as well. At the same time, um, I did not spend so much time in the core and essence of Sashiko in the um, domestic course. So if you'd like to dig deeper into the Sashiko world where I tried to pass down, please, please, please consider taking my like, current, I don't want to say offshore, but the core and essence workshop either online or in person. The in-person one is gonna be... next one is in October. I don't plan to... like, I don't... I enjoy teaching, but the teaching is not my priority for that, so... I try to kind of minimizing... not a minimizing... I try to limit the... Not limit. 
<laughs> I try, I'm trying to maximize my time to stitch as well. After all, I'm the Sashiko stitcher, so if I don't stitch, things get, things are not good. So yes, the online class would be great at the same time as I say, I say that the online class is great, but it's sold out for now. It is sold out. So <laughs> please wait for another two weeks or so. And there's a waiting list on the um the yeah, waiting list on the yeah, description area of the online class. So if you could fill out that waiting list, I should be able to send you the ooh Sakura. Where can we find the information? Mm. I think I put it somewhere on the description area. Or not. Uh, there is the... Actually not. <laughs> Just a second, okay. I thought I did it. I have very few online... I'm <laughs> sorry. I have very few in-person workshops, so this is the link for the in-person workshop for this year. Hi, Sakura. Hmm. I will put that... Actually, I can put it right now. Just a second, sorry. In person workshop in 2003 <sighs> Yeah, this week has been a little busy. The Domestica team told me that the class release, the class release of that course, like release date for that course was in, like would be in November or December for this year. So I wasn't prepared for that. <laughs> I was not prepared for that at all. When I received that information, like, well, I was still in Japan. Yeah, I was still in Japan when I received that information. And I had to prepare those. I did not have to prepare that much stuff, but uh, uh, it was, I did not have enough time to summarize the Japan trip or prepare for the next Japan trip. So those are the pending things, and I'm sorry that it's kind of pushed back. But I am not giving up yet. But it rather came fast and I am happy to release it. But it's really, really busy week. I still don't really believe. I mean, I do believe, but I cannot believe that I was on Domest Domestica where Many people are like artists. As you know, I don't really consider myself as the artist, so it's quite interesting to see myself there. Hello, hello. I think it's a good resource to start. I don't say, I don't really say that that's gonna teach everything you need or they need, but at least it's a good introduction from somebody who actually understands what's going on in Japan. I want the teacher to be at least somewhat understanding the Japanese culture. And in this case, the Japanese culture is kind of equal to the Japanese language. 
I don't think everybody who enjoys Sashiko has to learn Sashiko. I don't think like that. Like, you know, the language is not that important to enjoy the practice, practice itself. However, when it comes to teaching, that will be quite different. So, analogy-wise, anybody can enjoy the American food, like, what is the American food? Like, pizza, water. What is going to be the American food? Hamburgers or fries? A anything is fine. Like, anybody can enjoy the American food. But if one would like to teach what is the American food is like, they have to, the teacher have to learn the history at least or how to make those or they have to interview the you know restaurant owners for the American food it does not complete it does not conclude within somebody's mind and in order to have the interviews or in order to learn the histories they have to be able to read or talk English a language is kind of fundamental to understand the culture for that purpose, for the teaching purpose. Therefore, I think it's fair to say that the teachers are supposed to be able to speak somewhat language. You're not fluent. I'm not fluent in English either. Um, but enough language skill to communicate or even discuss about that topic with other native people here anybody who can who are practicing sashiko in japan it is quite important to involve the japanese sashiko artisans to pass down the sashiko we practice i mean if we're going to talk about japanese sashiko we cannot really discuss without involving them and as long as I know the current books or courses are not really involving the others, other Japanese, they are probably, some of them are from the Japanese people, some of them are very strongly linked to one specific Japanese group or Japanese people, but they are not really including everybody in Japan. I am not including everybody in Japan neither yet, but I am willing. And that's pretty much everything I do right now. So I hope that course will be uh, like a gateway for those who wish to learn Sashiko from Japanese for the Japanese people and then be part of the Japanese culture. And I think that's going to be the bridge from the appropriation to appreciation. I don't know what the cultural appropriation is like at this moment yet, but appreciating culture is a little too vague by word, but when we can respect the Japanese people who enjoy Sashiko in Japan, even without the English level, English ability, then I think we can say that we are appreciating the culture. Uh, at least that's the kind of first step, first, like a requirement for that. Again, in teaching, teaching, not the practicing. If you were just gonna enjoy it, don't worry about the language, um, enjoy it. I hope you, you know, I hope they care who they are learning from, but language itself is uh, what to learn is the learner's responsibility but what to provide what to offer what to teach are the teacher's responsibility here my responsibility so it is us who has to be be like careful. so if you have taken that uh, course please leave the review um, good review would be very much appreciated i am still a bit skeptical about the contents i know what the people want to learn they want to learn how to 
and I added as much how to as possible, but I did not compromise the priority of talking about the culture or you know cultural context. So some people may be disappointed by that. So I do expect, I even told them, the group and the team, that I may, you know, receive some negative reviews because of what I explained there. But let's see, let's see how it's going to go. And if you were there, if you are in the course, your review, hopefully positive review, would be very much appreciated. That's going to help me out a lot. That being said, I am the same. I have no different at all. I will be stitching anyway, regardless, every Thursday night and Friday morning. Plus, like I do stitch, I try to stitch every day. Not this week. I haven't stitched this week that much because it's a bit of a hectic week. Well, not a hectic, tiring, a lot of week, like eventful week. So yes, I will be, <laughs> it's already in 2024, I'm scheduling the workshop for 2024 already. Um, I will summarize it, but I will be in North Carolina in February, probably, it's not has been decided yet. I'll be there in February and Florida again in January. Once I confirm everything, I will put it up. I think I will be in Minnesota in June next year. I guess. Has not been confirmed yet. Last week, someone asked what the Jap Japanese Sashiko practitioner think about the future of Sashiko. Yes, thank you. That was Helen, and thank you so much for that question. I did not prepare for that. Uh, last week, someone asked what the Japanese Sashiko practitioner think about the future of Sashiko. Mm, yes, that's a very good question. So the question is, what is the, what are the Japanese practitioners think about the future of Sashiko? Well, I think I have to start sort of explaining what are the Japanese Sashiko artisans are, or practitioners are. Um, Sashiko's form has changed a lot, quite look quite a lot last 30 40 years um the form of sashiko i practice like right now you're seeing it this was sort of revived in 1960s 1970s so in it's almost 40 no it's almost 40 50 years ago the japanese people revived the sashiko based on the information they had and those information were sort of alive. Let's say that I was living in 2000, I'm sorry, 1960, as like a 20 years old or 30 years old person. Uh, my great parents would be sometimes born in 19, like 18, like late 18s, right? Late 80s, late 18, 19th century. So there were still people who practiced Sashiko for the purpose of Sashiko, which is the survival. And those revives of Sashiko were based on the... I don't want to say true Sashiko, but more like the original Sashiko purpose. And that was the first big revival or movement of Sashiko in 1960s, 70s. Not a 70s, 1960s, late 60s and early 70s. 
after that, as the our need changes, Sashiko has translated to the more colorful stitches, like more colorful designs, or you know, fucking. So I don't. Most of the current Sashiko practitioner we can find, we can find on on the internet, are those who makes cute white fabric, like small things like this big, probably this big, uh, called fukin or hana fukin. And I'm not gonna. I never say that those are wrong. That's a very important part of the Sashiko's history and those people are publishing many books and they are part of Sashiko and at the same time they are people, they are practitioners who are northern part of Japan and they practice Kogi no Hishizashi which I cannot speak on behalf because I am too far from them they may have completely different uh, history or feeling about it so what I can say is only about the people who stitch the sashiko I practice, we practice, we try to pass down, and those who do not wish to be on the surface of the internet or to be in front of somebody. Um, the, te the student I teach in Japan, there are about 100 or 200, they are wishing to the other Japanese people to learn what Sashiko really is. Uh, they they do both like the style of my Sashiko and also Hanafkin. Uh, they hope, I hope to that the other we can share those, the other Japanese people will learn how to do it. It's not like A or B, we can do both. Uh, there might be preference but we can do both so I feel the same way that I would like to share those Sashiko to the other Japanese people too. If they learn Sashiko in the last 10 years, 20 years, probably they are more focused on Hanafkin because that was more available resources. Uh, more books, more kit, like the IY kit. For those who were practicing Sashiko 30 years, 40 years, 50 years ago, has been stitching that many years too. They probably stitch the things like we do. Um, there are not that many left. And they try to not to be so on the internet or surface of the media. One thing we have in common is that we do not define the answer. We kind of enjoy the transition. But one thing we have in common when we talk about those things is that it is okay to see the change. It's actually a good thing to see the change, but it does not... We want them, new generation, to acknowledge us, acknowledge them, that the Sashiko has developed from that. Like, besides, without the past, there's not gonna be the present and the future. So we want them to acknowledge the past. So I think that's going to be the answer for the question. And that's what I want the future to be more comprehensive. Unfortunately, uh, the Sashiko itself is not that popular in Japan. Uh, not that many younger generations have enough resources to start. Uh, it's so commercialized. It's so packaged right now for the kind of instant gratification quick result so at least I <clears throat> wish that they will learn what they might have had with their grandparents or great grandparents <laughs> that being said they are pretty scary people too <laughs> there, there are really, actually, quite many scary people who say that Nafkin is not a Sashiko. I do not agree with her, but I respect her opinion.
Oh, I, do not, I, I cannot, like, I do not agree with what she says, but I value what she thinks and what she says. She does not think the fukin or stitching on the fukin are not part of the shiko. I don't know why exactly she says that, but there are, there should be reason for her to say that. So I would like to keep her voice alive or included at some point. And well, it's really not. I am a very rare case. I know those sashiko because I was born in the family and I am young enough to use those internet or like I don't mind being on the internet because I was raised in those era era. And you know, I happen to be able to speak English for that. But not many sashiko artisans I know, they do not wish to be on the internet. They, they do not even wish to share their name, too. Are the people in Otsuchi still stitching? Yes, they are stitching. But interestingly, the people in Otsuchi are kind of new to sashiko. They had their own stitching culture there, but it was not so much about sashiko per se it's more well we have to define what sashiko is to begin with but it was not the way we practice and they did not really have to stitch much because the otsuchi was the kind of fisherman's work <clears throat> they had a lot of like a stitching culture to fix the fish net but stitchery wise i believe as long as i know they did not have the culture left of course there were stitching cultures stitching there were people stitching uh, but they did not have time or opportunity to revive it as the some culture cultural practice so what they do right now is of course based on what they had at the same time some of them are from our sashiko it's more like a mix of what they had and what we offered so they are still stitching, but some people say that that's not sashiko. <laughs> some very strict people will say that what they do is not sashiko. Uh, it's a good discussion, and but we have to kind of define what sashiko is to start a conversation. So it's kind of difficult to even translate. I can follow up with the Japanese, but. Uh, it's quite difficult to discuss or even translate. Um, I can probably translate, but I do not wish to do that without the context. And in order to do it, it's going to be like one full-time job. So one day. Hope you're feeling better. I think I, f I think I recovered. F I recovered from the trip. I was quite busy for this week, so that helped me to feel much recovered. It took like three years, not three years, three weeks. I hope everybody feels the same too. Um, but. <sighs> My view for what the other Japanese sashiko artisan think are also kind of skewed. It's kind of biased because those sashiko artisans I know are usually either very elderly people or those who came to me with or without a lot of sashiko experience. So those uh, information can be quite not wrong, but again, it's not a, enough to say that that's the Japanese voice. So it is another goal of me to talk to the younger generation of sashiko uh, practice today. But I think it can be wait. It can be a little later. It can be. It can wait. Right now, the priority is to talk to somebody who has been practicing 
for more than like 60 years or 70 years or 80, 80 years. And the Japan trip visit was for that. And I will focus on talking to the elderly people until we become elderly people. I don't think the priority is to talk to somebody younger. They, I hope they will be, they will continue stitching. And if they don't, let's say that, you know, there are, let's say that I don't stitch 10 years from now, then I do not consider myself the Sashiko artisan. I had a Sashiko as a hobby or, you know, practice, but it's not really the artisan. Without the practice, one cannot be the artisan. So, let's say that 10 years from now, some if somebody is stitching the same way they do the same Sashiko, then that's the, you know, voice for that. Do the Sashiko in Japan appreciate what you're doing? Yes. <laughs> I hope so. I, well, <laughs> it's not really Japanese to say, I appreciate you in the world. So if I hear that, that's quite weird. But as long as I know... Mm, they don't they don't really thank me for that do they i don't i don't I, I don't really remember receiving the appreciation from their mouth like like appreciation word from their mouth but what i receive is kind of like an apology several of them apologize to me that they should have done what i've been what i'm doing right now some of them feel sorry or too bad that I have to do it. Well, I am doing I don't have to do it. I am doing right now. Which can be a little too late. And I have to admit it's a little bit too late. And some Japanese stitchery, stitch, some Japanese artisans think that that's something they could have, would have, should have done that. Those people are like 50 or 60 years old right now, a little less than, a little before 70 years old. So my mother's generations, it is very true that if they could do what I'm doing right now, I wouldn't be doing this one at all. <laughs> it's, it's really interesting, but if they decided to do what I'm doing right now, I don't think I existed. I don't think I do exist, no. Because it's gonna be secured. I did not like if if there's one Japanese master who can discuss with me in English. I don't think I can be this loud. I I shouldn't be this loud. I shouldn't be speaking up speaking up this much. Because I should. What I want to do is probably just help her or him. I can be his, like, a second man, or I can be his, you know, helper. I am not... I do not consider myself as the leader. Sometimes people ask me to be activist, but I am not gonna be one of those. I would like to make sure that nobody's left behind, so it's like a... I don't lead. I'm gonna be at the end of the line to make sure that nobody is left behind. So if there are if there were any leaders in 30 years ago, then I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing. But I think you have a unique ability to, to uh, you you I think you have a unique ability to tell the real Japanese stories in English. That's the that 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 is it. Yeah, that's the that makes me unique it is very true but that's also very interesting because if i were very obedient if i were very pure naive i mean good kid let's say if i were a very good nice kid who listened to the parents so much i wouldn't be able to to speak English like this. I may be stitching Sashiko more, 
I would have been a better surgical practitioner probably, but I wouldn't be able to share those things because I came to the U.S. simply because I hated Sashiko so much. I had an you know, excuse to come to the U.S. I wanted to study a or you know, those whatever. I had a reason for that, but the primitive reasons, motivation for me to come to the U.S. was to get, get out of the family. So it's the combination. It's like luck, or we probably call it fate. Like, without the earthquake in 2011, I wouldn't be probably stitching now. Without that, I wouldn't be stitching right now. If I did not meet my wife, I wouldn't be stitching right now. Like, if I were married to somebody very... I don't want to say weak, but somebody who think that May man should provide the family and you know men should be the husband and should be the breadwinner I wouldn't be able to stitch like this because I cannot sustain I cannot I cannot provide a family by doing such a goal. I can probably sustain the minimum wage life but I cannot probably sus like provide the insurance and stuff like that so I have to move back to Japan which is gonna limit a lot of things because I cannot teach in the US with English Without visa, or without green card, without citizenship, it's quite impossible to teach in the U.S. Is it possible? It's, it's very difficult. I wouldn't say impossible, but you have to hire lawyers. Make sh look, It's not really okay to come to the U.S. with the tourist visa working as the instructor. Even if they transfer the money to the, my account in Japan, it's a very gray, I think it's a block, but it's kind of, it, it's, it's a gray, it's probably no, but actually it's no, <laughs> it's, it's illegal. Please ask the lawyer for that. But I did not want to do it, I did not do it, because I knew that I, it's going to be very, very bad for my um, record. If I, if they find out that I did it, and if I decide, if they decided that I did something illegal, I will. I would not be able to come into the U.S. at all for my entire life. That's the, that's not the risk I want to take. That's not even the risk. That's the, just just the risk. There's no return for that. So, without the marriage to my wife, it's not gonna be happening. So everything is like every single things I decided. Everything's thing that I received is leading me to here be here so it's quite interesting you were describing this other such courses in the first state in japan yes so to be fair with others to be fair with others who apologize to me it is really not a good comparison <laughs> i happen to be able to do this because of the unique situation and they shouldn't be really feeling bad about that. <laughs> they shouldn't be feeling bad about that. But I understand that they're feeling bad for that reason. But that feeling bad is a very Japanese thing to do. So, you know. <laughs> it's more like a counter. It's not a counter opinion. It's more like my reply to that. If somebody, if the Japanese people appreciate to me they i think they do but they apologize before appreciate do you think by the way those apologies might not be really the apologies so we have to be careful with that do you think non-japanese people who learn sashiko are helping to lead sashiko into the future or are helping to keep it to alive Ooh, that's a very good question do you think non-Japanese people who learn Sashiko are helping to lead Sashiko into the future or are helping to keep it alive? Mm. Yes. Yes, I think so. I think they are the future of Sashiko. Especially 
you who are here right now who are trying to listen to what I'm saying, you are the future of Sashiko. Not only Japanese, but anybody who try to learn what Sashiko is, they are the future of Sashiko. At the same time, the reason I say that yes is that we have to kind of look at 2030, 2040, like 10 years from now, 20 years from now. I don't think those Sashiko... This is a very, very big assumption, and I do not like the assumption, and I, I know it is not a good thing to assume for somebody's own behalf, but for those who kind of enjoy Sashiko lightly, without trying to learn what Sashiko really is, they are probably, they will not be stitching in 2030 or 2040. It's, it requires a little bit deeper than that to continue this practice for 10 years or 20 years, 30 years. So I am not really worried about the future that much because 90% of the people who are in Sashiko are not stitching 10 years from now. They will switch what they do. based on the trend. And as I as I always say, there are two kinds of people in Sashiko. One is those who like stitching, who like Sashiko itself. They will probably keep stitching for another 10 years, 20 years. So they might go somewhere else, but they will come back eventually. And they might go somewhere, but they will come back again. And the second category of the people are those who like Sashiko because Sashiko can bring something else to them. So it can be money, of course. Money can be one thing. If the money, if Sashiko can bring the money, of course they will stitch until they keep seeing the money. It can be popularity, fame, something like you know social media numbers. Um, those are two obvious things. But the not only that. If they look for the meditation throughout Sashiko, they might not be stitching in 10 years because there are many other ways to have a meditation or relaxation. It does not have to be Sashiko. It does not have to be stitching. So it, it's not bad at all to go somewhere else. It's really, I'm not saying it's a bad thing to do. But when we talk about the Sashiko itself, I think the people who stitch are the future, the people who actually practice Sashiko are the future, not a teacher. The people who stitch are the te I mean the future. Teachers are like, you know, as the Helen said, it's a guide. They are the guide to help more stitchers, but they are not the future itself. So since since I see, um, you know, I personally see those Sashiko addict. <laughs> I don't know if it's a good way to say it, but they are probably addicted to stitching itself. Like they will probably stitch regardless of what Sashiko brings them to them. <laughs> so they don't need money for that. They don't really need money by stitching, they don't need fame, popularities, they don't really feel like it's for the meditation, or it's, they, they just don't have anything besides the love for stitching. And it's not really for like, a, you know, a few hours, it's like thousands of hours, it's crazy. For those who doesn't stitch, this is like a crazy amount of hours but they can do that and even worse sometimes they stitch for the purpose of nothing like they just stitch for the purpose of stitching they, they probably feel sad when they complete the stitching 
So like many people make sashiko, many people stick sashiko to make something, right? To make a bag, to make this pin cushion, to make something. And they should feel happy, accomplished, satisfied when finished stitching, right? They spend so many hours to do that. They might go for a drink to, to celebrate the achievement. They probably feel a little bit depressed when they finish stitching because they have to prepare for the next project. They probably have to think about it. Those preparation are an important part of the shiko, but they will probably get a little bit of dis dis depressed or sad, disappointed, down. And then they will start drinking the beer when they start stitching to celebrate because we can stitch while drinking. In fact, I recommend drinking while stitching. So that's a little bit of difference that I can see. It seems many people will do some kind of work while it's popular and then move on to something else. Yes, so unless the word sashiko is protected somehow, as long as as long as the sashiko has its meaning and it, as long as the people don't say that it, whatever is sashiko well it, we can do whatever for sashiko then i think it's gonna be okay uh sashiko addict there are may there may be a few on the live stream yeah there may be there may be they or we yeah, I, I use the they just in case that i'm not part of it but if you consider me as part of you yes i am i guess well, I think I am. <laughs> yeah, man, that's that's very good. Let's let's have those meeting one day, like a retreat. Might like yeah, that that that'd be so nice. Like let's do the retreat at some point, somewhere. Like Sedona in Arizona or somewhere like where, you know, many people go there and then we start the those retreat by saying like hi my name is Atsushi and I'm Sashiko addict the goal is to not to give up the addiction though goal is to embrace that addiction then but yeah that's that's what I see in Japan too <laughs> if you kind of start opening the, your bag while you have nothing else to do like if your hands are not moving, yet your brains are working, let's say watching TV or drinking something or talking to somebody, if you start, if your fingers start searching for thread and needle, that's the addiction. That That's quite good or bad addiction because... But that's what it is. That's how ordinary it is. That's what I define by the ordinary. We don't really have to force ourselves to eat something or you know do something ordinary if one has a hobby for running the running becomes their ordinary and they don't have to force them to force force themselves to run for me running is a very difficult thing now because i haven't run so far so long time i probably have to hustle myself to do that but ordinary means that it's being part of the everyday life. <laughs> they can be considered as addicts for that too. I think that's what defines Ashiko too, I guess. It, it, like addict is a little <laughs> strong word, but it's the ordinary. I always say this word ordinary and you know it, it might be it might sound a little you know too harsh, but as long as one does worry about the size, stitches size, that's not ordinary. There's nothing wrong with worrying about one's stitches size, but if we care only about that then 
if we have to discuss what is the right size of such stitches, then that's not order only already. <laughs> if we're gonna a couple of retreat, anyone who wants to help me organize one for us. <laughs> well, well yeah, I will leave it up to you. Organized things are so difficult, so I will leave it. I will be the participant. But yeah, that's. I hope that answer that. I hope this li <laughs> this live streaming answered the question: What the Japanese artists and think about the future of Chico? Mm. One thing we have in common are that is that we kind of consider such as insignificant. I don't know anybody who thinks such is the art. Besides several people, like actually, I, I do know people. I'm sorry. Yeah, actually, I knew I know someone who tried to make such as the art, and I respect them. But most of the people who consider Sashiko as the oral, I do not think Sashiko as the art. So it is changing. It is changing, but again, this requires a little bit of time of experiencing it. Like a year, two years, five years, that does not really count. <laughs> I mean, I don't want to be, you know, harsh, but we are talking about somebody's life. Five years are not that enough to talk the whole picture of that. I know you're serious, Leah. I know you're serious. So I am serious, please. That'd be great. I don't know where, but probably in the US. I, yeah, look, you know, cruise sounds great. Like somewhere. I think some people are doing, I think that was the Indigo, uh, Sue from Indigo Niche in Australia. Uh, I'm a good friend of her and she organized or she did something like cruising with Sashiko or so, something like that. I thought that was a fantastic idea, which I cannot do right now, but no boat. Okay, no boat. Uh, Sharon say no boats, then no boat. Uh, has to be somewhere there. In the mountain, probably. So you have to, you have to. Leah has a lot of. Uh, Leah has to make like a Google Google form or something to collect the ideas. This is just my opinion, but I think it has to become art to a certain, certain extent in order to help sustain it. Yeah, I agree. I agree. That's why I'm trying to kind of... As much as I say that Sashiko is not the art, I do not say that I don't want to make such a course the art. I just cannot believe, I cannot believe, I cannot just imagine that I consider myself or Sashiko as the art or art artist. So I have to leave it to somebody else for that. And I think I'm teaching Sashiko to make that happen. It's not me who makes Sashiko as the art. But I am trying my best to make one. Would you know more than one to make it happen is enthusiast a softer word than addict maybe there are both kind of people watching maybe so it, it can be any word um enthusiast passionist passion with um the you know stitches with passion such lover lover such go you know any wording itself is not that it, it's more like a word play and i understand both people here uh but they are it is true that they are people like addict 
And it's actually a Japanese people who use that word addict. It's from Japanese live streaming. Many we kind of agree that we are that kind of people. <laughs> well, I mean, if you start shaking, like if your hands start shaking because you don't stitch, that's a little too much. But we go through that. Oh my God, my fingers are kind of. Like my, if my fingers start shaking like this, and then if I hold the needle, it stops. That's a little too much, right? I've done that. I've been there, I've done that. I have to kind of a little bit detox for that. So yeah, what wording is more like in play. But at my place near Santa Fe, New Mexico in the mountains. My neighbor says Castas for vacation rental. What is the Castas? But I, I'll Google that later. Wow. Ah. What is Castas? Casitas. Casitas. It's like a little house, I guess. Oh. Oh. Casita. Casita. I think it's Casitas. Oh. It's a small house. Interesting. <clears throat> but yeah, uh, <laughs> long story short, to come back to the original story, um, that's what Japanese people are thinking right now, as long among the Japanese people I know. I have to meet more Japanese people, so I cannot speak on behalf of everybody, but that's what I know. And the common thing we have is that we are the people who enjoy stitching while, while doing something else. We don't really focus on the each stitches as, as you can see right now today I keep speaking stitching together but I do not really focus on one stitch uh, st focusing on one stitch itself is really it, it is part of sashiko they are they are sashiko like that but not the sashiko we practice it's not a whole picture of sashiko so we call that unshin and that requires a little bit of personal attention from me so that's what I teach either online or in-person workshop. I did not have enough. Well, it's not realistic to teach that in the mass course, like the Domestica one. So I lightly, I explained that lightly. Um, but I have to be, like, I really have to be careful when I do that. Because misunderstanding can create a lot of damage instead of help. So that's what I teach on top of the course. But again, the domestic course is great to understand what's such a good. It's a really good summary of what I, what I have been talking here on the live streaming last five years. So instead of watching almost like a thousand hours of live streaming throughout you can learn the summary in three hours or so I guess
That is one of the things I appreciate about going to Japan. Yep, yep. Uh, I teach what I can teach. I don't really hide anything. So anybody who take my workshop get everything from me. There is nothing I can teach after that. I mean, I can probably inspire. I can show you, but there's no things to teach. So after that, we have to, not have to, but in order to understand what Sashiko really is, it is very important to visit the other teachers, the other masters. And here, when I say masters or teachers, uh, I count like a minimum of 30 years of experience. It might be a little too big of the experience requirement, but 30 years is quite good enough to understand that they are stitching for the purpose of stitching. They are not. You ha they have to like Sashiko. <laughs> if they don't like Sashiko, they cannot stitch that many years. I hate Sashiko, but I stitch for 30 years. That's a little... That's... That's me. <laughs> and they have to have a reason for that. And that's not really healthy. And I, you know, I was a child. That's why if they were adult and they had to stitch Sashiko for 30 years, although they didn't like it, that's a little, that's a little, mm, that's, that's impossible to happen because adults have choice. So I will keep looking for those teachers. And I believe there's more. And I had a, I, you know, we became nice I don't want to say friend, but we became, well, kind of friend. They're teachers, so I don't want to say friend, but we get to know each other well, so I can ask them again next time we go to Japan. And I think that's gonna... That's something I can offer, but I cannot do myself. And that's important. I think I'm gonna finish the live streaming after this much thread. Has been one hour. Wow. I really appreciate the question, Leah and Helen. The question helped me to ease in to have the live streaming easy going. Oh, by the way, this nail is done by my daughter. She has been practicing the nail and she needs more nail than her fingers so I'm her um, how do you call that? I'm her sample. Yeah, wow. Well, she's practicing. I think she can do better, but you know, she is eight, so I'm not gonna say that. I mean, she has to stop watching TV when she has to focus. I told her that. It's Leo, you have to really focus if you wanna focus. <laughs> not a model. <laughs> I think it's a sample. And I don't have a job. I don't have a job. Which have to I which I have to worry about. So, you know, and I'm a good resource. She has. She doesn't have a sibling, so it's good to have somebody like that. Okay. <laughs> Sharon, I didn't say that word. I thought of that. I thought of that, but it's, I'm not a guinea pig yet. I may be, but... Okay. Um, I hope that this live streaming is helpful for you to get a rhythm. 
uh, if you are new here from the Domestica's live, <laughs> live streaming, Domestica's course, welcome. Uh, this is not really a place for me to teach, as I said in the beginning. This is more like the place for me to just stitch. And I prioritize me stitching rather than speaking or teaching. So, uh, if you expect me to teach something here, it's not going to happen. But more like, I want this place to be a place to be. And so if you could bring some of your stuff to stitch together, that's that's the whole point of this live streaming. No judging, no um, forcing you to do something specific. It's just, well, I might complain, I might, you know, say something negative. I, it's not really always a happy place to be. But it's like, you know, friends talking over the coffee just here over the stitching. And if you are, in, if you're waiting for the, uh, I'm sorry, nothing. Give me a little time for that. Cold. And besides that, I hope I can see you on the Domestica's course, Domestica's course or other such class online class and the live session that I offered. The live session we have this weekend is, I have three of those this weekend, so if you own the Core and Essence online class and if you are ready to take the live session, uh, there's still space for that too, so. All right, I hope you have a good night and I will see you next Thursday night. Have a good night, bye bye.